Hello and welcome to today's webinar on APEX, brought to you by Insight and Dell Technologies. I'm Jessica Austri, Marketing Specialist here at Insight, and will be your moderator today. Before we begin, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. This discussion is designed to be interactive between you and the presenters. The webcast console you are looking at can be completely customized, and you can resize or move any of the windows that you have open. If you have any questions during today's discussion, you can click on the Q&A widget at the bottom and submit your questions. All questions will be captured. If you are experiencing any technical difficulties, please visit the webcast help guide by clicking on the question mark icon below the presentation window. The help guide covers common technical issues. I would now like to turn over this presentation to our presenters, Chris Kapusta and Adam Smoka. The floor, floor is yours. Thanks, Jessica. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Capusta. I'm a senior manager with Insight in our data infrastructure management practice uh, based out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, really excited today to just spend a few minutes kind of talking about Dell Apex, and we're going to start with where kind of Insight sees the markets and the opportunities and, and, and do a little bit of uh, kind of the definition of some terms just to level set what we're going to be talking about today. But before we jump into that, uh, Want to give Adam just an opportunity to introduce himself as well. So, Adam, go ahead. Hey, Chris, Jessica, thank you so much. So, I appreciate everybody taking the time to join us here today, and a huge thank you to Insight for sponsoring and putting this together. My name is Adam Smolka. I'm a senior director for Dell's Apex uh, as a service offering here in North America. So, Chris, I certainly appreciate the time. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Really excited about the conversation today. So just, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping up front. Um, for those unfamiliar with Insight, just wanted to provide kind of insight at a glance here. You, you can see some of the numbers on the screen, but we are a global solutions integrator um, based in with operations in 21 countries, around 11,000 on our workforce. Uh, when, we, when we look at kind of customer facing broad technical resources here out of, out of the 8,000 uh, client facing teammates, about 4,500 of those are technical resources. So really engineering driven, really architecture driven, financially stable and a long legacy and knowledge in the marketplace today. So as we, as we kind of jump over to the as a service offering, as a service market today, what I wanted to do is just take a, a few moments to talk about some of the analyst view of, of this as a service market, starting with Gartner here. And you can start really with that statement right up front. Uh, Gartner's seeing the CapEx model as, as really an act of a throttle on innovation. Um, we have to be able to move past legacy practices and mindsets and we have to be more agile, we have to innovate faster, and, and really the, the CapEx methodology of procuring that infrastructure and, and standing it up really acts as an inhibitor to that innovation. Um, we can see, you know, it's just some of the numbers here, some of the predictions by 2025, you know, more than 40% of all on-premises IT storage and support costs will be replaced by storage as a service. And by 2025, more than 70% of corporate enterprise grade storage capacity will be deployed as a consumption based model. So, you know, just the, the kind of what the analysts are seeing in the world, and, and that's why we're really excited uh, about these programs, especially Dell Apex that uh, we're here to talk about today. But let's, let's do a little bit of definition up front here, just so we're all on the same page of, of what we're talking about and the different ways that we can procure and consume infrastructure today. Uh, I think we're all pretty familiar with that CapEx model. You know, the, the way I like to equate it is to give it, it's kind of building a house. And as I sit down and build a, and plan to build a house, I've got to lay out what my needs are going to be for the next uh, 20, 30 years, however long I plan to spend there, and do all of that kind of construction and architecture up front. You know, very similar in the CapEx model. I've got to plan my three to five year needs. Um, uh, it's all upfront costs. I pay regardless of what I've used. You know, it is a little bit of a higher initial outlay. Could be likely lower long-term costs depending on how we plan and how, how much we actually use um, in, that, uh, in that infrastructure. And we've had kind of innovative programs come from various manufacturers to alleviate some of the refreshes in that CapEx model. So we've gotten a little creative there, but um, you know, as, as OpEx really started to become interesting to a lot of organizations, the industry started to really move towards that OpEx model. This is typically just a lease under the covers. Um, because it's a traditional lease, there's some FASB accounting rules that we have to use for reporting. There's usually a minimum spend. 
um, could still affect profit reporting because that that uh, infrastructure is still on our books. And you know, with, with most leases, it's typically more expensive in the long term. And, and then we start looking at more of these consumption models and, and as a service models. And really, what this offers is almost a almost a, a, a cloud consumption like way of consuming hardware on premises. So lower initial outlay gives me the flexibility to flex up or down, which I don't typically get in a lease or a CapEx model. Uh, could be lower cost if our workload is highly variable. So if I do have workloads that flex up and flex down quite a bit, there, there are some cost savings to be recognized there. Generally, static workloads, we, we do see a little bit higher cost, but again, um, just depends on what the needs are. But really, more importantly, this is not a lease. Uh, in the Apex program, you know, Dell is retaining title of, of this hardware and assuming all of that risk. And, and what they're really doing is offering it in a consumption fashion, just, just on premises. And, and that could be inside the four walls of your data center, could be in a colo. You know, there's flexibility as to where that infrastructure runs. But what's most important here is it gives you that flexibility. It gives you that cloud-like consumption model for on premises. Um, uh, infrastructure and, and gives you that agility to flex up and down as your needs change and as your, your rates of innovation or data consumption or maybe there's mergers and acquisitions, whatever the scenarios are there, as your needs change, your infrastructure is now flexible and can change with it. And then just as comparison, I think we're all familiar with cloud consumption models, but uh, usually the lowest initial outlay of capital, technically infinite capacity, generally um, you know, what alongside that become, becomes infinite billing. You can flex up and down. Uh, could be lowest pricing. Again, variable workloads generally have the, some, some pricing benefits. Static workloads generally have a higher cost. Uh, and then, you know, usually with cloud consumption, you do get some hidden costs, quote unquote hidden costs there. You get things like ingress, egress, you know, API charges, um, you know, the, the cost of moving and writing and deleting data uh, on, those, on those cloud providers. So why infrastructure as a service? Um, it, it's a consumption-like model, like public cloud. You know, upfront pricing, pay for what you use. You get to scale up or scale down. You know, usually there's some there's some term uh, minimum term limits, but you have flexibility as to as to how long we have that infrastructure. If our needs change, we can we can choose to renew or not renew. You, you have that flexibility in that cloud-like model. From a financial perspective, it's not a CapEx purchase. We don't need that high initial outlay. We don't have any assets on our books, and we uh, we can avoid the FASB lease rules when it comes to accounting and reporting uh, of profits and, and things like that back to, to the street. It, it could be a bridge to a cloud strategy, um, but it is also a way to reduce risk from cloud and business uncertainty. Again, I can, I can run this infrastructure on-premises inside of my data center or colo, whatever wherever my infrastructure resides today. Um, offers some flexibility from that perspective. Uh, I, can, I can scale up, scale down, just like I can in the cloud. I have the ability to balance my workload needs versus what I'm consuming from an infrastructure perspective. Uh, and again, I'm hosting that and uh, continuing to have that data uh, under my control here. So before I kick it over uh, to, to Adam to really walk through the uh, the Dell Apex offering in some greater detail here. I just wanted to kind of highlight the, the deep partnership between Dell and Insights. Uh, you can see some of the accolades that, that uh, Insights won uh, from Dell. We are a titanium black partner, which is the, the highest partner offering in the Dell program. You know, we have uh, 70 plus teammates in, in North America driving the, the Dell solutions and technologies. And again, um, you know, uh, very architect driven, um, very uh, engineering driven from that perspective. So really great partnership between the two companies, really excited about Apex. And, and Adam, I'm gonna turn it over to you to, uh, to dive deeper into the offering here. Hey, Chris, I, I appreciate it. And, you know, I think that that was a perfect level set of just some of the different terms and ideas and concepts that we're going to cover here over the course of the next maybe 30 minutes or so. So I really appreciate you doing that. I also see that there is some uh, a few questions already coming in through the chat, uh, and I think we're going to be able to leave some time at the end of the presentation here for some live Q&A for both me and Chris. So maybe, Chris, we can pull some of those questions out of the chat and we can address those live uh, towards the end of the call here if that works for everybody. So, again, I, I greatly appreciate everybody taking the time. 
Uh, we'll, we'll double click today into what Apex is and what Dell Technologies and what Insight are driving with our customers. And I think that, you know, usually when I'm talking to our customers here, um, there's three really common themes that regardless of industry or vertical or segment, an overwhelming majority of our customers are really telling us three things right now. And I always like to start this conversation by just hitting these three bullets head on uh, to see if it resonates with the audience. And if these are things that you are trying to tackle in your own organization, well, then I would submit that this is a really compelling conversation for us to dig into deeper. So number one, you know, overwhelmingly organizations are telling us, listen, I, I want to get out of the business of day-to-day -day running data centers, the day-to-day -day management of infrastructure. What organizations are trying to do is take their IT professionals and point them up the value stack, get them out of, you know, carving out LUNs and doing patch upgrades and getting IT focused into more uh, strategic priorities for the organization. So if that's something that resonates with you and if that's a, you know, a, a goal that you've got for IT, well then this as a service conversation is really gonna be very compelling for you. Number two, uh, organizations are telling us overwhelmingly, listen, I need more flexibility, you know, when it comes to how we pay for IT. The days of cutting a big, massive PO for a boatload of infrastructure that we're guessing that it's going to last us for maybe three years or five years, look, th those days are really kind of over. What folks are telling us is, look, we want to pay for the infrastructure that we need when we need it, scale up, scale down. We need flexibility when it comes to how we pay for infrastructure. And then the third bullet here on the far right, and Chris, you really talked about this in your uh, kind of introduction as well. Uh, you know, across the board, look, customers are saying, I need to define what this cloud first strategy really means for us. And cloud means a lot of different things to different folks. It's a, you know, I'm doing air, air quotes here. It's a cloudy kind of term. Cloud first could mean different things to different organizations. And defining what that strategy is and putting a concrete blueprint in front is really what this is all about. And this is, I would say, the easy button to really accelerate this cloud first journey. Uh, and, and we'll talk about some of those nuances here. So again, I just, I want to tee up this conversation with these three priorities. If you're listening to this and you're saying, yeah, one or two or three of these things are important to me and things that we're working on, then again, I think we're really going to be on the right track here for this conversation. So what is APEX? Um, you know, let's just kind of define what we're talking about here. So APEX is the name for Dell Technologies brand new strategy to deliver a radically simplified as a service experience for our customers. And what I would really underscore there is the simplified piece. If you remember nothing else from this conversation, if you're engaging with Insight and you're engaging with Dell Technologies on an Apex discussion, what you can expect as a result is radical simplification for how you run infrastructure. So what does that mean? You know, let's click into that a little bit. You can see the three bullets on the screen here. Well, it's all about delivering an as-a-service experience that you can drive yourself on your computer with just a couple of simple clicks. Simplify how you engage with Dell and with Insight and make it self-service. Number two, we're talking about being able to consume turnkey solutions. So the days of, you know, 100 boxes showing dock and racking and stacking and cabling and assembling things and putting them together uh, and, you know, making sure that everything's validated and works and patched. You know, th those days are kind of gone. We're delivering turnkey solutions here that are ready to go, ready to accept workloads that you're simply going to consume. And like we talked about a minute ago, that they have the ability to scale up and down depending on business needs. You don't have to guess what you're going to need in two years or three years or five years, you just pay as you consume. And then the third bullet here, and we talked about this cloud strategy and what 
folks are trying to accomplish there. You know, if you have a strategy that says, hey, some workloads are going to live on-prem, and by on-prem, that could mean in your data center, it could mean in co-location, and some of my workloads are going to live in the public cloud, one of the big hyperscalers, what we're really offering here is the ability to unify all these different clouds, give you a common operating system where you, as IT, you're the broker. You can seamlessly move workloads from on-prem into the public cloud over to a different public cloud back on-prem again. It puts the power in the hands of IT. So, so that multi-cloud story and delivering a real result a turnkey result to accomplish that, that's a key part of what we're doing with Apex. And look, it, it wouldn't be an Apex presentation if we didn't have you know, the big boss man, Michael Bell, here on the slide. Uh, you can see him smiling there on the bottom left. And, and there's a quote here from Michael, and if you've caught Michael you know, on TV and you know, some of the interviews that he's given, in every single interview that's in industry publications like CRN, look, Apex is the number one thing that Michael Bell is talking about and you can see the quote that he's giving on this slide here. Look, we're moving the vast majority of Dell technology to as a service for our customers. And I'll come back to that first slide. We're doing this because this is what organizations are demanding. This is what folks want. So we're shifting our entire strategy as a company to deliver what our customers are actually asking for, which is an as a service experience and all the simplification and flexibility that that delivers. Hey, Chris, I'll pause there for just a second. Does that make sense? Or are, are you tracking with what I'm kind of describing here? No, absolutely. And I, I, you know, I think you kind of reinforced a lot of good points there. As, as you're looking for that agility, as you're looking for that, even the unified financial models, you know, the, the workloads in the hyperscaler, we, we want to kind of match how we, how we procure and manage and pay for hardware on-prem. And, and I, you know, you touched on the, a little bit more of a white glove service and, and leveling up um, employees to, to, to perform tasks more meaningful to the business rather than just procuring lunge and, and runs and managing hardware on a day-to-day -day basis. So, no, it tracks very well to what we're seeing in the marketplace today. Yeah, awesome. So you had some great statistics on the front end of the presentation here, Chris. I'll offer just a couple more. You know, this is not just a strategy that Dell and Insight are saying, hey, this is great. You know, IBC really dug into this with real-world customers, real-world organizations to figure out why as a service, what are the benefits? And, you know, I won't read the slide to you here, but the number one bullet that you can see at the top is let's reduce the workload, the burden that is sitting on IT today. I get the opportunity to work with uh, organizations across North America. There's not a single customer that I work with that puts their hand up and says, hey, I'm getting more and more and more budget, and I've got more and more headcount, and, you know, the, the CFO won't keep on giving me resources. That doesn't exist anywhere. Every IT organization is being asked to do more with less. So by adopting as a service, you can reduce the burden on your IT staff, get them out of the day-to-day -day management, and focus them up the value stack into more strategic priorities. That's huge. Number two, cost. Look, if we can drive better cost per user metrics, then that's a huge win for the business. And that's a huge reason for why folks are adopting as a service. What if we could simplify how we manage everything? What if we could add more capabilities? What if we could provide safe and secure disposal practices? Maybe you've got compliance or risk uh, factors that you need to think about. Maybe you have data governance uh, concepts that you need to adhere to when you're talking about your infrastructure. Well, we check all of those boxes with Apex as a service. And, you know, Chris, you really hit this shift from OPEX, or sorry, the shift from CapEx budgets into OPEX. So that's a big driver. These are the reasons. And again, this is feedback directly from organizations for the outcomes that they're getting when they're adopting as a service. Now, let's look kind of big picture. You know, I saw a question in the chat here saying, well, so, so let's really define, you know, public cloud versus as a service and on-prem. Well, how do these two things work? So, look, we all know why public cloud is attractive. And, and again, and I think that Insight, Chris, I think you would agree, we, we would both, Dell and Insight would advocate saying, look, the public cloud is the right place for the right workloads. 
And we love the public cloud because of the three bullets you see here. The public cloud, it's simple, it's easy. We have a single console, we can click a few buttons, we get increased agility, we get the services we need when we need them, right? We can accelerate innovation, we can move fast with the public cloud, we can spin things up and spin things down really easily. Now, from an on-prem standpoint, we've been building data centers on-prem for decades, and we've been doing that for some really good reasons. The number one reason that I'd point to here, it's single rate transparency. So let's simplify what that means, running workloads on-prem, and again, on-prem could mean in your real estate, your data center, it could also mean in co-location, but when you run workloads on-prem, nine out of 10 times, it's going to be less expensive than a pure public cloud play. You eliminate ingress and egress fees. You see exactly what your cost profile is going to look like. There are no surprises when you're running on-prem. Number two, certain workloads in today's environment demand critically high performance, and they need six nines of availability. Look, sometimes the public cloud can't hit these performance or reliability or availability metrics that certain workloads require. We can absolutely hit those performance and reliability metrics on-prem. And then we talked about, you know, data localization or regulatory requirements. Some folks, some industries need to be able to literally point to, my data lives on this box right here. This is where it lives and sending it into a public cloud where it could live in a lot of different places is not ideal for certain workloads, right? So the idea of what we're delivering here with Apex, it's the best of both worlds. We're gonna deliver all of the benefits that you see for on-prem infrastructure, a less expensive cost profile, high performance, six nines of availability with all of the regulatory and security requirements that you might need, but we're also going to deliver all that goodness with the benefits of the public cloud baked in. It's massively simplified. We, Dell, own the infrastructure. We manage the infrastructure. You get a consumption model where you can spin up and spin down and into more gear, flex down to less gear, and move at the speed of public cloud, but with all the benefits of on-prem infrastructure. This is really the idea this is what we're delivering to customers across North America today. And it's been an absolute game changer for this type of infrastructure deployment that folks might want on-prem or in co-location. Chris, I'll pause again there for just a second. Any commentary you'd offer here? No, I, I, like, I like how you started this slide and, and you know, take it as a workload by workload approach. And that's, that's really the way you know, we look at it when making that determination of, of what lands on-prem and what lands in the public cloud. And I, you know, I, I hate defining boxes because there'll always be organizations that don't fit in a box, but for the vast majority of what we're seeing and what the industry is seeing, you know, the future is hybrid. We will have workloads in public cloud. We will have workloads that remain on-prem for all of the right reasons. How do I simplify the, the management, the the ongoing maintenance, and the ongoing um, life cycling of that infrastructure on-prem to, to match that kind of experience I get in the public cloud? So I, I think this really drives that point home. Awesome, thank you, Chris. Okay, so let's keep on moving here. So, so let's define some key principles when we think about Apex from Dell Technologies and Insight. So look, number one, and I'm starting on the top left here, you know, this is really not a discussion about a widget. This is not an attempt to sell you a box and my mousetrap is better than the other mousetrap and these are the bits and bytes and speeds and feeds and you kind of stack them up side by side. This is not that conversation. This is an outcome conversation. So, so customers that are embarking on this as a service journey, look, it, the focus is not on, and you know, I've worked for Dell for 17 years, so I'm very proud of what Dell does, but it's not on the plumbing, the, the stuff under the covers. The focus is on your application stack. The focus is on the business outcomes that you're trying to drive as an IT organization. You get to focus there and you simply tell us the parameters that you need from your infrastructure to deliver the outcomes that you're looking for. We handle the details under the covers. Again, the, the plumbing, you could maybe call it. That's our problem, not your problem in this as a service world. Number two, and I think we've established this in this conversation, everything we're talking about, it's consumption usage based, right? You pay for what you need, when you need it, 
You don't have to make big bets and cut big POs for infrastructure that needs to last the organization for five years. In today's world, as fast as technology moves, uh, frankly, that's not realistic anymore, right? So you need to be able to consume what you want, when you want it. Think of this as a water bill or an electric bill. However much you use, that's what you're billed for for that given month. We can deliver this infrastructure as a service in any location. Perhaps you want this infrastructure sitting in your data center. Maybe you want it delivered to a co-location or somewhere else, a satellite or a remote office. We can do all of that with uh, Apex as a service. The resources are all elastic. Again, scale up, scale down. You need more capacity or more performance. You have the elasticity available within the Apex offering. All of the infrastructure is owned and maintained by Dell Technologies, but the customer, you, operate the infrastructure. So again, a very cloud-like experience, what you might be familiar with if you're using one of the big public hyperscalers today, that's exactly what this would feel like when you're using Apex as a service. So let's look at maybe sort of a real world example. You know, this is, this is maybe where for a lot of my customers, this conversation gets a little bit more real. You know, what does this really look like in practice? Now, again, I mentioned I've worked for Dell for 17 years. So what we're looking at here, this traditional infrastructure lifecycle in a CapEx world, I'm very familiar with this. And most customers, most organizations are really familiar with this as well. And what it is, is frankly, a little bit of a complex and long cycle with a lot of work for you as an IT team when you're engaging in traditional infrastructure in a CapEx sort of environment. Six to 12 months before you do any sort of a change, any sort of a refresh for traditional infrastructure, there's a whole bunch of work that has to happen that far in advance. You're working with your CFO or with your procurement team to figure out budgets and set a budget for the entire year. You're trying to forecast, well, here's the gear that we've got, and this is how much capacity we have left. And if the capacity keeps trending the way that we think it's going to trend, this is what this is going to look like in 12 months or 24 months. You're also probably engaging today in a whole bunch of vendor and technology evaluation. You know, the, the, I talked about sort of the widget conversation before. You're evaluating widgets. This vendor has this mousetrap, and this vendor has that. And, you know, look at the specs on this one and compare it to the specs on that one. Well, you know, that's a complicated process. That takes a lot of time, a lot of cycles from an IT organization. And then I'm sure everybody's familiar with the bottom bullet. You know, you're negotiating pricing with the vendors that you end up selecting. You're going through service agreements. You're redlining between legal uh, departments. The punchline is there's a lot of work and a lot of complexity that goes into this traditional CapEx infrastructure sort of uh, cycle before the gear's ever even shown up on your loading dock. Then think about, okay, well, now the gear, I've gone through all of those initial steps. The gear has showed up. It's all sitting here on my loading dock. And now we've got three to five years of product life. That's what most organizations are going to depreciate their infrastructure over three to five years. So now the work's just getting started, right? You need to now install everything, configure it, migrate all your data from the old stuff to the new stuff. You need to pack up all the old equipment and make sure that you've wiped all the drives and you've got certifications and you're disposing of it. And then over the course of the three to five years that you've bought this, uh, you know, CapEx infrastructure for, you're going to have additional costs. Uh-oh, maintenance bill just showed up for this array. And, oh, no, we got to add more capacity over here on this array. And we need some more servers over here. And, you know, you're constantly in this mode of additional sporadic costs. It's tough to forecast. It's tough to, uh, you know, streamline and smooth that out for your uh, procurement officer, for your CFO. So long story short, this traditional sort of method of buying infrastructure, it's burdensome. It takes a lot of time and effort, and it's sometimes fairly expensive. Now compare and contrast that to what we're talking about here today with Apex. You can completely eliminate all of that forecasting and procurement and migration, all of that work and all of that effort really goes away when you're in this as a service method. Because again, you simply are just going to consume what it is that you need to consume when you need to consume it. We streamline that procurement process. You've got standard T's and Z's and once you agree to them once, then you're free to go in the Apex console and consume any of the infrastructure services that your organization might need. 
The middle bullet in this new as a service world, we've talked about this as well. Look, get the IT team off of the minutia, the day-to-day hands-on keyboard management of infrastructure and focus IT up the value stack. And then you can experience the entire as a service, your entire Apex journey in a single seamless console that allows you to do just about anything that you want to do with your infrastructure. And we'll take a quick peek at a little bit of what this console is all about. But what I would offer up to folks that are on the uh, WebEx here is if you're interested in spending a little more time with the console, you know, sync up with your Insight team and sync up with your Dell team, and we can get you access into the Apex console. You're not committing to anything. You don't have to buy anything, but we can give you access into the console where you can really click around and spend some time and understand what this is all about on your own time if you're interested. Chris, I'll pause again there, sir. Any commentary from you on what we're talking about? No, I, I think it's really, um, you know, you, you talk about that decreasing that time to value. Uh, you know, that equipment shows up on the dock. It becomes that ticking time bomb of, hey, my, my support contract started, my, my depreciation started, I need to get that installed, I need to get that in production. You know, the, the whole Apex offering of reducing that time to value for, for actually utilizing that infrastructure, I think, is very beneficial there. So um, I, I like that conversation. Agreed. Okay, let, let's press forward here. And we've got just a couple of more slides here um, where I'll cover a few other details of what's available with Apex. And then again, Chris, if we've got some time here at the end, uh, I'd love to hear if there are any questions, or again, maybe we can pull some of the questions out of the chat here and address them live. So what you're looking at here, this is a snapshot of, you know, like the family portrait of what's available in Apex today for our customers. Now, if you think back to the very first slide, the picture of Michael Bell, Michael's been really vocal about the fact that, look, Apex, this as a service experience this is coming to every single thing in the Dell portfolio. I mean, all the way to you know laptops as a service for our customers. But this is what's available today for customers to consume. In the session that we've got today, in the time that we've got today, we're not gonna do a deep dive into every single box that you see on the screen here, but I'll highlight where you can see uh, kind of in the, the top center left where it says Apex Cloud Services, I'll just highlight a few of the offers that are here. So Apex Data Storage Services, if you want to consume block storage as a service or file storage as a service, that's available right now. You can do that with Insight and, a and Dell Technologies. We've also got Apex Hybrid Cloud and Apex Private Cloud. So this is, if you need more than just storage, if you need sort of an instance, an entire stack of storage and compute and network, and that's what these two offers are all about. The difference between hybrid cloud and private cloud is hybrid cloud gives you the VMware software to give you connectivity and the ability to move workloads seamlessly from on-prem into the public cloud of your choice. So that hybrid cloud story that we talked about a little bit on the front end. The Apex Cloud Services with VMware Cloud, this is a new offer that actually just went generally available last week. This is going to be the fully managed experience with the entire VMware stack riding on Dell infrastructure to automate and give you the true easy button to deliver the multi-cloud experience, the hybrid cloud experience that we talked about on the front end. So this is VCF fully integrated, fully managed, riding on top of Dell infrastructure. So if you're looking for the easy button to really get the ability to move workloads between public clouds and on-prem back and forth. You are the broker of the workload. That's the solution where you can accomplish that. And I'll also point out too on the bottom here, Apex backup services. So maybe you just need the easy button, a completely SaaS offering. There's no infrastructure to manage. This is a total software as a service offer. It's available today to back up workloads that might be sitting in a public cloud or perhaps running on infrastructure in the data center. You could even back up endpoint devices. So this is a new offering that we've just announced in the Apex portfolio. So again, you can see on the slide here, there is a huge galaxy of different solutions that are available depending on the exact attributes and the outcomes that you're looking to drive with infrastructure as a service. There's a lot that's available here under this Apex umbrella. Now, 
I do want to hit on a formal partnership that we've got with Equinix. I've mentioned a couple of times in the presentation here, you've got choices. Maybe you want this infrastructure as a service to sit in your data center. Well, that works, we can do that. But maybe you're in a position where you're saying, hey, you know what, we're going to be shutting down our data centers. We want to get out of the data center business completely. Well, that works also, and we can help you do that by delivering infrastructure as a service. It's owned by Dell, it's managed by Dell, and in this case, it would sit in an Equinix co-location facility. So you've got the ability to get all of the gear off of your data center if you don't want to be in the data center business at all. Another really interesting piece here is that if you do go this route, if you want infrastructure in Equinix, Equinix gives you uh, direct connections, so we're talking sub-millisecond latency, into all of the big hy hyperscalers. So think about this hybrid cloud, multi-cloud story that we've been talking about that we can enable with Apex. This gives you the ability to get sub-millisecond direct connect into AWS or Azure or GCP if you're using any of those platforms so that you can run your workload seamlessly with no interruptions in performance for your end users and move them at your discretion between the public clouds or on-prem as you see fit. You don't have to worry about ingress and egress. You don't have to worry about you know, cost spirals for moving your data around, and you don't have to worry about performance latency concerns. So this is a really differentiated offer here that for folks that are serious about the hybrid or multi-cloud sort of strategy, this is the best way to deliver it in a simple, easy, consumable way. So as we kind of approach the end here, I do want to touch on the Apex console. So I've mentioned a few times, everything that we're talking about here, it's managed through a single pane of glass. We call it the Apex console. It gives you the ability to do a lot of different things with your different Apex subscriptions. So I'll build out, as you can see, the kind of arrow going around the screen here, the different things that you can do. So number one, very easily, I'm starting on the top right here. Look, you can at least click around and see what's the catalog. What infrastructure services are available from Insight and from Dell today? What, what's out there, right? You can obviously subscribe. So if you configure something in the Apex console and you've got the ability to actually put together different offers and pick different characteristics, you can click go, you can click subscribe right there in the console. You'll see pricing, real pricing, street pricing right there in the console. You can click subscribe if you want to subscribe to a different service. You can deploy workloads. You've got the ability to monitor any Apex subscriptions that you have live. So we're using a, a tool that Dell has called Cloud IQ to give us health and performance statistics on all of your workloads. What's the capacity trend look like? How is performance looking? You know, when might I need to add additional Apex services and subscribe to more performance or capacity or whatever it might be? You've got the ability to grow. So let's say you do need to uh, flex or consume more of an Apex subscription. You've got the ability to grow right here in the console as well. So this is a really full featured experience that really I would say is very differentiated in the industry. If you look at some of the other infrastructure folks that are offering as a service, the consistent feedback that we're hearing from our customers is the Apex console is miles, you know, light years ahead of what some of the other folks might be offering. So this is really differentiated. And again, I would offer for folks here on the WebEx that if you're interested in actually getting into the console and just clicking around on your own time, just let your Insight team know or let your Dell team know and we can get you set up with access really easily. So to wrap it up, you know, again, it's a pretty simple story here, and I think we've got about five minutes left for maybe some Q&A here. The punchline is this, and, and hopefully this is the takeaway that everybody's gotten from the, the kind of high-level overview we've done today. Apex gives you the opportunity as an IT professional to focus on the outcomes, not on the infrastructure, not on managing day-to-day, -day, turning knobs, carving runs, you get out of that business. Apex is all about delivering simplicity. This is the easy button to run infrastructure, to turn on a hybrid or multi-cloud strategy to make it real. This is the easy button, and it gives you as an IT professional the agility that you need. Click to consume what you want, when you want to, and it gives you the control of the infrastructure that maybe you don't always get in the public cloud. So. This is priority number one for Dell Technologies. 
the feedback from our customers and the adoption for Apex is through the roof. And for all the reasons that we've talked about here today, it delivers what our customers are asking for. So Chris, that's the story on Apex. And again, it's a little bit high level here for this session. If anybody's interested, we can certainly dig in deeper here. But Chris, what do you think? Maybe we open it up for a couple of questions here in the last few minutes of the presentation. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'll, I'll just throw up this QR code on the screen here as, as you're listening. If, if you do want more information or would love to have a follow-up or a deeper dive, just go ahead and scan that with your, your phone or tablet or any smart device, and uh, it'll, it'll bring you right to a page to, with more information and the ability to schedule that. But there are some good questions that came in. I want to make sure we, we touch on um, some of these here. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick this one here first because I think it, it really um, – really some information we should get out there and differentiate uh, Apex from, say, some of the cloud providers. The question is, will workloads from other companies ride on your Apex gear if that gear is requested at a corporate office? And, you know, I think the point we really need to drive here, Adam, is regardless of if this, if this infrastructure resides in your four walls in your data center or inside your cage in, in a colo, like the Equinex relationship you mentioned, yeah, that hardware is dedicated to to that customer, and it is not a shared service where you're you're partitioning off parts of, of a storage array or compute or anything like that to to run a multi-tenant, multi-company workload. And um, yeah, I'll let you comment on that, Adam. But I, I do think we need to really drive that point that uh, when when you when you sign on to this Apex program and request the hardware you need in that as a service model, it, it's dedicated to you and not a shared service. Yeah, Chris, you nailed it. And Kevin, it's a great question. And Chris, you said it exactly. Sometimes that's potentially, for some workloads, a drawback with public clouds. You're living on hardware, mixing with other companies' data. Who knows where it begins and where it ends. With Apex, you are subscribing, infrastructure as a service, to your specific gear. It is 100% your organizations. No other organizations ever touch it or have access to it. It is your infrastructure, 100%. That's a great question. And that's whether it's on-prem, Chris, to your point, or whether it's sitting in co-location space. Um, great question. Hey, let me yeah, pull out another one here. Or, I'm sorry, go ahead, Chris. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so Wayne asked a question about the Oracle use case. Does it bring your own license or are they provided? If you bring your own, do resources allow for partitioning uh, for purposes of reducing licensing counts? So yeah, totally. So um, Oracle licensing is not included in the Apex subscription. And you could say Oracle, you could say SAP, any workload here. We're, we're not delivering your application software. We're delivering the infrastructure as a service. And yes, you've got the ability here to do partitioning. Anything that you would do on infrastructure that you buy in a CapEx sort of model, you can do that in an infrastructure as a service model. Uh, there's nothing magical about the, the plumbing here. This is best in class, industry leading infrastructure uh, that you can partition, you can you know, do what you want to do with. Uh, we simply own it and manage it for you. So great question there. Chris, anything you'd add? No, I, I think you hit the nail on the head there. And, and it, you know, from a from a software licensing perspective, it is it is bring your own license. But um, we can, you know, again, it's 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 infrastructure that we're just consuming financially in a different way. So we can carve that up uh, as you as you do today with your with your hardware you purchased on that capex model for that licensing perspective. So I, I think you nailed it there. Um, one other one, Rob, Rob had a good one here that I think we should make sure we clarify. Um, customer operated, but Dell owned implications uh, of that model on support. And um, I'm, I'm going to guess a little bit what you, what you meant here, Rob, and if it's not, we can clarify in the chat. But, you know, Adam, and, and tell me if I speak out of turn here, but uh, is part of that price is you're paying to consume that infrastructure as a service, support's included in that. So there's not a separate support contract. You have to you have to pay for and maintain like you do in a traditional CapEx model. You know, Dell will, will do a lot of the, I'll say, peer level, low level support, I guess is the way I'll put it. You know, make sure the hardware is available, make sure um, there's, there's not errors on the system or if there's failures, you know, they'll schedule replacements. All of kind of that day-to-day -day operation and maintenance of the system is done by Dell. But as far as a maintenance contract is concerned, that's, that's all included in that, uh, that as-a-service price. 
Yeah, you got it. it. All support is offered from Dell's world-class support organization. And in fact, when you're in the Apex model, not only do you get the support that you would expect from Dell, but we have different roles that are assigned to the different offers inside of the Apex portfolio, where you've got even better resources. You've got dedicated people assigned to your Apex subscription to help escalate issues and to make sure you're navigating, you know, Dell support and that we're getting resolution. All of that is included in the Apex price that you see in the console. So yeah, great question. And yes, that's absolutely all included. Maybe on the last question, I know we're right at time here. I just want to hit this. Dave asked, you know, I'm using a, a five-year lease today. Um, would I move to as a service model uh, for, for different reasons? So, yeah, totally. If, if it works for you, then, yes, you've got that option. So a lease, and, Chris, you hit this on the front end. What we're talking about today, it's not leasing because leasing is you have a set monthly payment that you know is not going to change, you know, for, in this case, five years. You've got a set lease payment for five years. Apex as a service is different because you don't have a set monthly payment. You might have a baseline commit, but then you can go up, you can come back down, you can flex as the business requires. You're not locked into a set monthly payment for some amount of time. Uh, so great question there. So Chris, I don't want to push us over time here. I know we're two minutes over. Uh, and Jessica, I appreciate everybody joining here today. I hope this was helpful. Again, please reach out to your Insight team. You can use the QR code you see on the screen. Reach out to your Dell team if you want to do maybe a little bit of a deeper dive into some of these offers here, but great questions. And Chris, I sure appreciate you uh, co-hosting here. Thank you. No, absolutely, Adam. And, and thank you for the information today. And, and thank you everybody for joining. We appreciate it. Thank you all for attending today's webcast. An on-demand version will be available within two to three days. You will receive an email notification once the recording is available. Thank you again and have a great day.